It's Friday on your view. Welcome to the show. I am Murayo Afolabi Brown. As always, I have the ladies with me. Hello, Nima Akasha Zabiri. How are you doing today? Fine. I'm grateful to God. It's been a hell of a week driving out of my community for the past four days. Mm. So the tankers are taking siege of the entire community. All the way to Levy Town, tankers are parked on Old Dodger Road. They are parked on the new bridge on the Four names on the express. Mm. They are parked. Yesterday, I tried to get to Lasso to turn. There's a shortcut I usually take home, and I spent an hour there. Mm. It was not funny. And shortcut turned long cut. So it, it became something I needed to banter about. Mm. We need yeah. all the ministries, especially that of works and transport, to sit down with Pengerson, Nupeng, have a meeting on how people can live sanely yeah. amidst their activities. Absolutely. We cannot continue like this. I see army officers assisting them, navy officers assisting them. It seems they're worsening the situation. They're taking over everywhere. Leaving the community in the mornings, I have to find my way into learning field right. all the way to come out. And, you know, to come back is the same mm. um, task. I, I pity for the people living in satellite town right now. We're going through a lot. Mm. And I hope the government is concerned as well. Yeah, we hope so too. I mean, you've been on this for many years already. And it's sad that we keep doing this. What's the over and over again. How are you doing, Tokwe? How are you? I'm good. Um, but for the past two days, um, I've been a song. I I use it, I've been using a particular song to counter worry in my head. Mm. So I was doing calculation, calculation. My husband just said, "Overthinking, no fee, soft problem. Uh -huh. Better days are coming, man, will be." <laughs> so by this weekend, my calculation is using that. Every time I start thinking or I start trying mm. to permutate. I just tell myself, overthinking, no fist of problem. Mm. Better days are coming, you know. So, and I think that's a message that is very relevant to mm. everyone right now. Because as we're entering the Christmas season, you're starting to yeah. tick the box of people you need to give, yeah. give gifts oh. to, the um, bills that you have to cover for people around you. And for me, it is, I have events. And I have to, to buy clothes, mm. to sew clothes. I'm like, hey, overthinking will not solve this problem. Anyways, Bele, how are you doing? I'm Mariah? fine, I'm good. This weekend I've got two events um, that I'll be going for. So there's this um, Green Fingers Wildlife Sanctuary. I don't know if you've heard of, it, of them, but I call the owner the pangolin guy. So they're having their anniversary of conserva Wildlife Conservation Day celebration and I'll be there to talk to youths and children about the importance of wildlife conversation. And then also NCF is having their 40th anniversary dinner on wow. the same day, so an awards night. I'll be there as well. So, looking nice. forward to the weekend. Obi, looking forward to you getting an award for <laughs> this year has been a very busy yeah. day. You've spoken a lot about yeah. nature, yeah. about yeah. conservation. See? It's great. There's it so many people doing the same thing, thing as yeah, well. Yeah, but right? I'm saying like, now you get, you're getting some kind of recognition, which is great. <laughs> I mean, congratulations to that. Thank I you. was in Paris State yesterday. It was interesting. Um, it, was, it was my first, it was like fish out of water. I'm not very good at traveling around the country, but. It was nice, brief. It was, um, it was my first time in, um, in that kind of situation. But I enjoyed it. I enjoyed observing around, seeing people, hearing people talk about what they're doing, how they're going to do things. It was an interesting experience, and I enjoyed every moment. I would probably like to go to Quara properly to go mm. eat the Wara. I, I mean, I would love to go be invited <laughs> to enjoy Quara the bright First lady, day, you know? we would like to see Oh, Quara. I saw the first lady yesterday. <laughs> yeah, yeah, she did. I didn't, I didn't go to greet her, but I just saw her. It's a very nice lady. Mm. Let's go on a break. When we come back, we continue with the review. We start with the review of our papers. Stay with us. We'll be right back. Stay tuned. Your view will be right back. Thanks for staying with us. We're going to start with the nation. Security chiefs. Wiki attacks article for criticizing Buhari. Abiodun takes 472.25 billion Naira budget to Ogun State Assembly. Nigeria faces debt servicing challenges, DMO warns. IG blames violence, tension on governors. Tinubu to make Southeast Industrial Hub. And uh, First Lady Governor's Wives Rally for Tinubu and Shetima in Ilori. Zenith Tech Fair 2.0 attracts global brand leaders. All right, which story are we starting with? Okay, I will start with the major headline. So, um, Governor Wiki yesterday um, had invited the flag bearer for El um, Labour Party. Um, Peter Obi, um, and while he was there, he was responding to some of the um, um, journalists, and he was asked about 
um, the, no, he, he gave his own opinion on the flag bearer for his own party, PDP, concerning his um, thoughts on the lopsided um, appointments made by our present, this present administration, that's President Buhari, and he said that he sees this as being hypocritical because if he cannot, that's, Atiku Abubakar cannot solve the problem of um, lopsided or unfair appointments within the party, he has no moral rights or justification to talk about um, um, President Buhari's um, appointment yeah. to these uh, security chiefs. And he, he, you know, he says that um, they are going to, he, he now says to Peter Obi that he understands why Peter Obi left to pursue his own ambition, yeah. that if he hadn't done so, he would not be where he is, yeah. that the party, the way the party, you know, just trying to blame the party. I understand that they're having issues and it's good to sort of push, you know, for different candidates. But at this point, it looks like he's sabotaging his own party. party. I mean, the flag bearer of your party, whether you like him or not, represents your party. So I hope that yeah. PDP know, and Governor Wiki is on a total are going to sort of sort this out. He has invited Buhari, he's invited yeah. Kokonso, he's invited just, LP, everybody except for Atiku. At this point, there's <laughs> no... <laughs> this come is come just, just something in the state, so let's just wait. Another story in Nation, I was going to take the... Um, Ashwaju was actually in, um, in Oweri yesterday. He was at a town hall meeting with leaders of the private sector and trade associations where he promised to revive ailing industries and ensure massive development in the southeast to assuage the past difficulties of the, that region. He's saying that he's going to turn the entire southeast to an industrial hub. He said, my government will rebuild an economy with a growing industrial base, more better jobs for youth, and more high-quality homegrown produce. He said, we'll establish an industrial hub throughout the nation and modernize existing ones. So he does acknowledge that there are, there are some industries within the southeast, but he will modernize those ones and then build more. He said quite a few things, I mean, a number of things that... Um, in, in a way, but it's interesting to know that he's able to go town hall meetings across. It is done in Lagos. It's done also, um, I think, in different states in the north, and it's not going to the southeast, which is a good thing. Let's take another story in Nation. Mrs. Um, the DG of the Debt Management Office, Mrs. Miss Patience Oniha, says that you know um, our dwindling revenue and um, borrowing make it difficult for us to service, you know, our outstandings. Um, debt that Nigeria is owing outside and within the country. And she also says that, you know, the, the inflation rates increasing across developed nations due to the Ukraine-Russia um, issue has, you know, for that made it difficult that, you know, before the United States just recently increased to 15% from their 13% um, interest rates. And, of course, this will affect countries like Nigeria, Ghana, and Kenya who will not be able to borrow while servicing existing debts, and we now um, the servicing for existing debt also will now attract additional interest. And I'm right. wondering, except that debt is restructured, the cost of the servicing, the percentage for servicing that debt, is what is in the contract for the borrowing. Does it just change according to countries' wills? Do they mm. is it allowed to continue outside the contract to change the interest rate? But that was what she said, and right. she said that because. The, at the core of borrowing is revenue generation. And revenue generation now is very tough in Nigeria, particularly. We will have difficulty in the coming years to service our debts and borrow. Okay, so the National Security Advisor, NSA um, Major General Bapabakana Mugunu, was speaking in the mm -hmm. House, trying to defend the budget for 2023. And he said that Nigerians are willing, Nigerians are suffering, and there's a huge insecurity challenge within the country and that they need to, they need to, the budgets, talking about the budget and where the money is going to, he said that they have, um, the conversation around intelligence gathering needs to be financed because the major challenge is asymmetrical as, as according to what he said. And so they need to be able to gather information as from the locals as well as on a global scale. He mentioned and he appraised the effort of the DSS, the NIA, the F Defense Intelligence Agency, and he's saying that these people have been doing a whole lot and he wants to commend their effort. And um, he mentioned that the budget for security dropped a bit between 2022 and 2023. While the, the chairman for the budget was appealing to them that they, whatever they need to do, secure Nigeria mm. pre- and post-elections, right. do whatever you need to do to ensure that Okay, happens. moving on quickly now to Daily Sun. Looted funds, we've, replaced, we've placed many governors on watch list, says EFCC chair. IGP accuses some governors of sponsoring political violence.
Tinubu unfolds economic plan for Southeast pledges industrial boom in zone. Troops deploy 44 illegal refineries, destroy 44 illegal refineries, arrest 29 oil thieves, rescue 41 abductees. PDB holds umbrella day in Lagos for Atiku and Okowa. Oh, nice. I didn't know about that. Buhari, Sultan, Oyego, task Asu, other trade unions on negotiation strike. Big promises will be logistic support during LP campaign in Rivers. Gates Foundation targets health and Greek gender equality in Nigeria, Kenya, and others. Nigeria redesign. We need more time to evacuate money from the forest. Miyeti Allah begs CBN. Can we start with Miyeti Allah? Yes. So, <laughs> Miyeti Allah, um, Katuk Bridges Association of Nigeria, Mark Fran, um, speaking, the chairman of the group in the southeast, Alhaji Gidado, was talking to newsmen in Oka and Anambra State, saying that um, the deadline that has been given for people to return the um, current 200, 500, and 1,000 naira notes is too short for a lot of them who are, especially those who are in the forest and have no access to communication, TV, and other form of telecommunications. And so they need to reach out to them and get them to bring their mo evacuate the money and bring it to the banks. And that uh, it will take them about three months. So they are asking for an extended deadline. They said this had happened to them in the 1980s where the CBN had given them a similar policy, but they were not giving enough time. They were only giving about two weeks, and a lot of people lost their savings because they had them in the bank. Now, for me, this brings up a lot of questions. First of all, why do we have till today people, you know, hoarding their monies in the forest? So there's still a major distrust for our banks. And then secondly, um, wouldn't this allow for... Um, you know, some unscrupulous people take advantage of this, get monies, you know, mm -hmm. that is, you know, that is not clean, clean and try and put it through them and into the bank. I feel that I would like to see how the CBN addresses yeah. this. Yeah. Well, let me, oh, it's, it's similar. let me go on a quick break. When I come back, we'll continue with our review. Stay with us. We'll be right back. Stay tuned. Your view will be right back. Thanks for staying with us. We're still reviewing Daily Sun. I have the story on the IGP. So the IGP, uh, Usman Baba, was speaking yesterday uh, that the, he had blamed the increasing cases of political violence on some state governors. He was saying specifically <laughs> that we have been receiving reports of some state governors who encourage political thugs, the use of national security under their own purview, to control and disrupt seamless, statutorily guaranteed campaign activities of parties that are opposing to them. He also said that he blamed most of these incidents on political extremism, um, misinformation, intolerance, wrong political orientation, hate speeches, incitement and desecration of strategic actors. And he was addressing that the governors must be able to find a way to, um, to stop this and reorient their supporters to allow other parties to have uh, a seamless campaign within their state. Um, he says that they are frustrated competing political parties all the time. I think this has been raised uh, in, in every campaign or in every election. You get this report saying some states are not allowing other parties to run there, to post there, put their posters up. So I think the Inspector General is saying, listen, you are also encouraging these thugs to take advantage of this. Let's well, take the major headline. So yeah. the EFCC Yoga, um, Rashid, Abdul Rashid Bawa was talking about stashed. Um, you know, the benefits of the new Naira design, and he said that they are monitoring more governors than he earlier announced, which were three of them. He said yeah. that they have surveillance on more governors now, and he's also encouraging Nigeria to assist in exposing corrupt politicians. He says that this new Naira design has helped CBN bring out Nairas that should be in circulation yeah. that are kept out of circulation and causing us hardship. He mentioned that it is money laundry to do a 5 million naira transaction as an individual outside the banking right. financial institutions and also as a corporate entity to do a transaction of 10 million above outside so the financial that, institutions. So that you can't validate do, the MAC ban ones yeah. because you cannot exactly. have more than that money. With in cash. Mm -hmm. You shouldn't have more than that money in cash. So, so I'm hoping that they too expand their net and do not allow legitimizing by announcing certain mm -hmm. illegalities. Mm. Please, I want to take the story of military, um, good news from the military, the Director of Defense Media Operation, um, Major General Musa Damandami. Ha, ha, ha. I said that they, 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 they were able to destroy um, 32 wooden boats, 73 storage tanks, and 127, um, 27, 29 cooking ovens. 
They were also able to recover 512,000 liters of stolen crude oil. They found refined AGU, that's the diesel, about 114,000 liters and 1,000 liters of petrol, 40 vehicles, three, three motorcycles, three generators, five pumping machines. 29 criminals were caught and 104 rounds of special ammunition were found on them. This is good for Nigeria because we're battling with the fact that a lot of our crude oil is being illegally stolen. You mm. know, there's um, bunkery and all of that. So I, I really celebrate the military for their good work on this. Right. Moving on quickly now to Vanguard. 133 million Nigerians poor, says NBS. Tinubu to Southwest, uh, stop proclaiming our address to grievances. Nigeria to produce additional 255,000 um, um, barrels per day as SNEPCO com completes maintenance. 2023, governors to blame for violence, says IGP. U.S. threatens visa ban on election riggers, backs adoption of BVAS. Now we designed more governors now under EFCC watches, Bawa. Saludo so other critics from your state, envious, BK tells OB. <laughs> UTM offshore G JGC Technic emergency signed agreement on Nigeria's FLNG. FG says debt sustainability threatened by low revenue. INEC staff registered on the rage vote, says Igini. And insecurity, Nigerians suffering whipping, wailing, and moaning, says Mungono. Okay. Major Sorry. headline. Yes, major headline. So the Nigerian Bureau of Statistics ruled out what they call the 2022 multi-dimensional poverty index based on the multi-dimensional poverty index survey yesterday. And they said that 63% of our population is, you know, are poor. And that makes up 133 million, million of the 200 and above million that we have. And they said... Half of that number are children. So two out of every Nigerians are poor. And they said this puts them, um, this puts them over, uh, under lack and of all possible, possible, and all possible deprivations in terms of health, education, living standards, work, and shocks. And um, they said a breakdown of the dimension of poverty used by this MPI includes nutrition, which we talked about, well, which we learned a lot about yesterday, food insecurity, Time to healthcare, school attendance, year of schooling and school lag. Others are water, water reliability, sanitation, housing materials, cooking fuel, um, assets, unemployment, underemployment, and security shocks. And this, if they put it well, I'm sure the numbers will be above that. 65% mm. of our poor people, that's 86 million of mm. this, 133 million live in the north, while 35%, um, which is about nearly 47 million, live in the south. Wow. And they gave a breakdown of each state. Shockingly, Kano, highest number. Even Rivers is inside. Mm. You know, Akwaibo yeah. is among the top 10 most poor country, uh, states in Nigeria. And so it's not about resources. It's not about uh, yeah, facility and access. Akwaibo has been getting 30% derivative to, for years. Yes, yeah, so it has to be about um, more, much more. Yeah. I don't want to just say governance, but... Mm -hmm. I think I will. All right. Yes, yes I have a story. Um, so the United States through... Um, it's political counselor of the U.S. Embassy in Nigeria, Rolf Olson. He was at um, the Hubert Humphrey Fellowship Alumni Association annual seminar, uh, and he was themed promoting electoral integrity in Nigeria. And he was just talking about the fact that the U.S. is very adamant on uh, on um, and threatening anyone who is found culpable or. Um, found guilty of interfering with the electioneering process, either by rigging or causing violence, they, ha they would sanction that person and they would restrict, um, the ban them from entering, you know, their country. They said they've done this before, um, uh, where they put impose visa restrictions on some individuals for their actions in the November 2019 Kogi and Bayelsa state elections and also mm. October 2020. And that is just to show their commitment to... Um, strengthening the democracy in Nigeria and he also he also said that it's very worrying when they find out when they see in the media he says even traditional media where they would say something and then they'll be accused and they, their words are twisted he says it's very easy to understand them that one they have no candidate they're just only um, um, they're only committed to seeing that democracy is you know um, continues in Nigeria 
and that they back the BVS that INEC has introduced into the next okay. process and they see that this will help in a very way to um, give a free and fair election mm -hmm. coming 2023. All right, still on the EFCC and the redesigning of the Naira. Um, so he was still speaking yesterday after his meeting with the president. He was saying that they, he had reminded us that they had initially announced that the EFCC had previously um, had three governors who were on their watch list on the suspicion that they might attempt to launder slashed cash in their possession before the deadline. However, when he was speaking to reporters, he said that on that issue, it looks like... Oh, sorry, Continue. Yeah. On, that, on that issue, <laughs> it looks like the number may have increased. We are monitoring everything the governors are doing, mm. and Nigerians are also helping. Well, I don't want to give you the figures so that you don't think that... Or you don't begin to speculate where the governor is from, but it should have the governors that they are watching them very closely. Very closely. Everybody that stash money in your houses, they are watching you. Let me quickly take another announcement made by the res um, resident electoral commissioner for Ocean State, Mutiu Agboke. Um, Agboke. He said that he was giving an orientation to the Batch C stream, one members of um, the core members at the camp, and he said that if any core member that signs up to work during the election is found doing any electoral malpractice. You get money, you collect money, you'll be prosecuted. That they've had a good relationship since INEC partnered with NYSC. It's been a very good relationship and that they want to maintain that. And they're announcing to everybody that before you become an N um, um, before you are signed up to work with the INEC officials during election, you'll be made to start an undertaking that you'll be prosecuted if you are found to have been culpable in any malpractice. He also lauded the beavers as a good way to ensure there is little human influence in um, aiding any malpractice within the elections. I'm looking forward to that. Okay, we have to wrap up, but let me just take the final stories in the Nigerian Tribune. Let's see a story we've not taken. Using cannabis to cook dangerous, condemnable, says NDLA boss. We are happy G5 governor still with us. PDP Presidential Council says we are committed to tidying over... Um, we are committed to tidying all voter registers, says um, INEC. U.S. issues fresh visa sanction, threats and instigators of violence, and police are reign auxiliary over destruction of APC bubbles in Oyo. Is there any story that we've not taken there? Let's move on quickly. I think the NDLA um, oh, headline yeah. is obvious because I couldn't find the story inside. So yeah. Well, I, I, saw, I saw also on the NDLA where they're showing that they removed but the some part of this tubers country. of, of, of yam. Yeah. Yeah, but but some part of this everything. country, um, this thing is, is a normal vegetable and they cook with it regularly for are many you years. Yes, ma'am. No. People cook with it. Nah. No, no, it's no. not right. No, they, that no, it's legal. No, I'm sure they don't do it like it's a cultural vegetable that they eat. Mm. That they know what they are doing. It's not, about, <laughs> so don't, it's not about soup. It's not a soup. Let's go <laughs> with a break. When we come back, we continue with the show. Stay with us. We'll be right back. Stay tuned. Your view will be right back. Thanks for staying with us. So, Michelle, Michelle Obama <laughs> um, was trending recently because somebody had posted one of her clips um, from a time past where she was saying that in her own marriage, she gives, she, well, at the time when she was in her, in her marriage with her husband and before he became president, she felt that she was giving about 70% of herself. She had to put a slowdown because her husband also had an ambition to into politics and he was giving about 30%. And then that clip went viral because people are now responding. Let me read to you a few of the responses that somebody um, had given. Somebody has said that that's a bad advice. According to this person, women should never put their career on a break or slow down for a man or put 70% while he's putting 30%. Doesn't matter whatever the man turns out to be. Maybe if more men put a break on their own career for women, women will be ruling nations. The idea, therefore, is... Would a man make that kind of sacrifice for her, for his wife? That's one. Secondly, how do you know the kind of man to make such a sacrifice for? Because some of them are saying, like, well, it's because it's Barack. If it was one thumb dick and I want guy like this, you can't live, we slow down your career for him. You just find yourself in a different situation. So the question, therefore, is how does a woman know when to slow down or if to slow down for her spouse? Where, where she's a high flyer, she's doing so well, and he has a path that needs you to slip, slow down a bit and support him. Would you do that? Or is that too much to ask in this new century of ours where women are well empowered 
and running things. Okay. I, I think that, um, so, I've been reading Old Testament a lot, <laughs> and it's shocking where women used to be in the past. Mm. You know, the little history that I did, it's shocking the way women are seen as commodities. We've come a long way as women. Mm. And sometimes when we look at things like this, some young people are feeling like, no, I'm not going to step back. Women, people used to just grab a woman on the streets and sleep with her and it becomes wife or concubine. And that was a norm. Like, it was accepted as long as you wife her. It's okay. People used to knock on... Like, there were strange things that were happening and it was the normal thing. Thing. Daughters were... You, could, you are owing somebody money. You say, take my daughter. Mm. You know, ah, this man is so kind to me. Ah, you're a good man. Take my daughter. As in... Women were seen as commodities. They were given away. They were collected. They were fought for. They were bought. We have come a long way. And we still have a long way to go. We're not there yet. This comment, for me, Michelle did an amazing thing. And she didn't do it just for Barack. She did it for her children. Because the, the book tour she's doing is about the journey of motherhood, raising good children. Many women nowadays are in a hurry to become governors, presidents, super successful, and they are not raising their children anymore. And you don't have children that are wondering, do my parents love me? Are my parents, am I okay? I'm taking it from the perspective of, let's not water down what she's done into a competition of who is the most strongest in this Fantastic. space. Let me pause you on that. Mm. Mara, let me come to you on, on this thought, because as you I know, said, I, yeah. Well, yeah. when we started, I was so sure of what you know, my response was going to be, but you know, that's the thing about listening to other people's opinion. I didn't see it from that way. I just thought, yes, men should be, should also look at it in such a way that um, they should step back sometimes for the woman to push ahead. We don't have enough of that. We don't see enough of that. Society doesn't even expect it of them that they would step back so that the woman who is thriving would even do better. And sometimes, you know, it's, it's also to the detriment of the family. You know, he's not doing even so well himself, but would rather everybody, you know, Ataru Alalache, I'm not doing well, Madame stay at home, children, we're not, you know. Mm. So, and it's because we do not ask of them enough. But also it's because men have been told men, over time, you know, I hear it over and over again, that this is how they um, describe themselves as the providers. And so, if they are unable, they, they have to be able to provide for the family. If they are asked to stay at home or scale back on their own mm -hmm. career, that means they have failed. They have failed the family, they failed the wife, you know, and they failed manhood, you know. But it's important that we make that the sacrifices are seen to be that can be done both ways. Mm -hmm. That a man should be able to look in, at a situation and think, you know what? I think where we're headed right now where you stand right now, go ahead. It should not be a competition. So I'm not pushing for women, no, 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 this is our time, we will not step back. It's a conversation of teamwork. Mm. This is where we are right now as a family. And as the woman, I feel that you can push, you know, we can push, we can push your career right now. Mm. But that does not mean that man stays back home and doesn't do anything. So it means involving yourself in raising your family. Mm. We need to have men that do that more often. I recently saw a video of a man where the wife was doing a lot. At first, they said before the COVID, he was doing a lot better. But after the COVID affected his business, he had to stay home. He did not just stay home. He was sweeping, cleaning, taking, doing school runs, doing everything. When I saw it, even I felt, I've never seen this, mm. you know, like that, where a man is fully involved. Nigerian. No, no, not Nigerian. But, you know, the woman was now talking about finances. She was sitting there with him talking about finances. She was not hiding her finances, you know, because she yeah. now realized this is a team right. work. Right. We're doing, he's doing his part, and I'm bringing my finances. Okay, what do we do with this? Right. If one person doesn't feel that they are making the sacrifices and the other person is not making any sacrifices, I feel that it will work. Okay, let me come to you, Nima, because before, before I come to you, hear your thoughts on this, I wanted to just read two comments, which I think I'd, I'd like you to, to touch on. So one person re reacting to Michelle Obama said that, what you want to say is that Michelle made sacrifices and compromised for a man who is worth it. Make sure your partner is worth the compromise. <laughs> and that person now said, that compromise don't care the partner if it's worth it or not, if the partner is worth it or not. It doesn't include tolerating domestic violence. When you want your relationship to work, you better compromise. So some women have compromised and stepped back and regretted it. Mm. Where they stepped out in their career so that their husband can go forward. And when he goes forward, 
then he betrays or maybe goes out with somebody else or the girl gets, gets somebody pregnant, you know, then she feels like, why did I sacrifice my career? So some people have compromised in the past and it has burned them. But how do you determine which man or which spouse is worth it or not worth it for you to take a step back in your own career? So this is all play along gender. Because it was Michelle's account, mm. nobody heard what Barack, Barack sacrificed, sacrificed or compromised yeah. for her. So let's read Barack's account. Because he eventually became president, we might just think he never did have to compromise anything. We don't know how he started and at what stage the compromises were made. As much as women sacrifice and compromise for their relationships, men also do more. We just need to sit with them and ask, assess their own account of what their sacrifices were. And you'll be shocked. I, was, I had a friend who, who gave birth and I went to visit her. And I was like, it will take you three months. So you know you people must do three months. She was like, no, I'm starting my business next month. I was like, what will happen to the baby? My husband. And true to God, I saw it not that they told me. He stayed with that baby for six months straight. She would, she would express milk. He stayed home. In Nigeria? In my very before. I know this couple <laughs> very well. I'm sure they, that what you'll be like, Nima has brought our story out here. He did that for his, for his family. And I used to just, myself and other women would go like, ah, if our husband would just be like this man. He like, like those that cannot even tie ordinary diaper. They cannot even fetch ordinary water. You know, we used to say that. And that couple, people abused that man. Some people called him Muma Lapa, no son, because they saw him at all. Sure. But he did what he needed to do. And the wife is a high flyer businesswoman. She managed their business till the baby was good. And then he went to join her. And like men out, have been burnt that way where they allow their wives to go mm -hmm. high, to fly that high. And so then we're talking about human now, beings. Yes. Mm. When you see people born, people for, be, for being there for them, they are ingrates. Human and it can be across gender. Mm. In, in a marriage, it can be man, it can be woman, anybody can be born in anybody. You shouldn't genderize this, yeah. It's not about, about gender. Mm. It can be any ingrate in any gender. You, you take your time, you give all you want to give to any person, even mothers, even siblings. It happens. And we don't talk, talk about it that way. But when it becomes a woman, and it, what even makes it wrong? I personally, for instance, would sit when I want to assess my mother, mothering my children and being a parent. I don't put my husband in the picture. I always put myself alone. Every decision I take, how it affects my kids, I don't even see my husband in the picture as somebody who comes in. I don't. I don't put him. So you have no expectations in that? I don't. Mm, when he does it, I seriously do appreciate it. But whenever I assess how my kids turn out, it's why I don't, I don't share that responsibility with anybody. I ask God for these children. I birth them. I don't share it with anybody, anyone. Anybody who assists me as a support system, God bless you. That's the way I see it. I'm serious. That's a different angle. Let me go on a break. Mm. Okay. Let me go on a break. Let me come back. Because this is an interesting angle. I want to land it. I like I Nigerian I, I like, I'll come back to you, Nima, after the break. Stay with us. We'll be right back. <laughs> What's that? Stay tuned. Your view will be right back. Thanks for staying with us. We're still discussing this matter, and um, Nima had a. So, so I was saying that, you know, whenever I assess my role as a mother, mm. it's only me I assess. I don't look at my support system and blame them for anything. Whatever they're able to assist me with, that I benefited from, I recognize. Whatever I am unable to meet mm. because I did not have support or someone to, I blame myself because I, I need to be the one to check. I'm the one who asks my kids, I'm 100% on my kids' issue. All of, both of them, 110% on their issue alone. We can then be sitting down as a parent to decide how it goes. If I recently, I said it on the show that I took a decision as, as to where my child would be spending camp, and I did not carry my husband along, because that's the way I, I was like, she needs this right now, and so it's going to happen. And it was like, ah. So in this house, and decisions just happened. That was when I caught myself and apologized, because that's the way I, I, I think. I think in life, when you make your compromises, it doesn't matter how it, um, it turns out. Own it as your choice, and on the consequence, it can be don't anyway. Because it's, I'm the one, I'm the woman. It's, don't, the don't, don't have the mentality after all I have done for you. That's where the problem is. When you're doing something and the person is going and is going, that's, your, that's you, that you're, you're married, you're each one and as a unit. His successes are yours, own it. If you, whatever choices you were making, it wasn't working for him, you can also, also call him in the family and say, okay, we've, I've stepped down for four years. I've watched you at this thing. It's not working. Can I try 
my own, so let's see if it works. If he now steps down for you, does it become he, he sacrifice I get that, as I said, but, but I want also to give a voice to people who have made these sacrifices and has burnt them. You know, where um, the wife says, you know what, I was a doctor, I was a lawyer, I was whatever it is. I can okay, remember the story of a lady who got a job. I think I shared it a long time ago. She got a job in NNPC many years ago. And Shady. she got a job, but she chose not to take it because her husband was posted to Nigeria, to Lagos. And she didn't want to have to be going to NNPC and to, I think, was it somewhere, Bonny? somewhere, somewhere in Bonny Camp? Yeah, Stuff like that, sure. So she now refused the job. Four years after again, she applied again. She still got the better job again. And she still took, didn't take it because her husband wanted to have to stay home and take care of the kids. Mm -hmm. I she was telling me she felt, she was angry that she sacrificed mm -hmm. her career. She actually loved her kids that had grown up great. But she feels that now that her children are entering secondary school, she feels like she's lost out in life. Mm -hmm. And her husband, who has a high flyer, is doing so well, you know, she still feels like she, she cannot communicate, she cannot relate with his own friends because she's suddenly out of the corporate world. So she has no idea what's going on. So she feels left out. She feels like a whole 10, 15 years of her life has been just taken out away from the, to the kids. So when a woman uh, feels like that, mm. how do you then accept that it was your choice and just move, move on? So it's sometimes a very difficult to to So, feel. you know, one thing that... I know Nima has said that you make the sacrifice and don't come back and say, after I've, I've done for you, that is not the expectation. We just never... We hope we never get to the point where we have to even call someone out for not acknowledging or appreciating the sacrifices that we make. But it's the reality that couples have betrayed each other, you know, in, in situations like that. And even if you did not mean to, you say, after all the sacrifices, mm -hmm. we are taking account. We come to a point where we have to take account. Mm -hmm. So the truth is, as I know you said that we should give a voice to these women, but is that I, I feel that we give a voice to them many times mm -hmm. to the point that we have these conversations today where young people are saying, see, I've heard too many of these stories. Mm. I'm not going I'm to not going be to the next mix. one. Yeah. So this Michelle Obama story sounds weird because we have heard the betrayal stories many Jesus. times. Yeah. And the reason why this particular story that you have just highlighted, um, this NLMG woman, if the man, while she was making that sacrifice, understood the sacrifice she was making and was carrying her along, so yes, you're not in the corporate world, but come for us, you know, come with me as I meet my friends mm. or do some, she's doing something on yeah. the side. It will be sad that it means I'm sacrificing, to the, sacrificing for the family to the point that I have nothing else to do, I have nothing else to look forward to. There's not, there's not like a, a, an alternative that is less demanding of my time that I'm doing instead. So instead of both of us being out, you know, nine to five, I'm at home, but I'm doing something that he's supporting. I'm at home, but I'm doing maybe online courses that he's supporting. But if I'm just at home, and then he's flying high, and then he gets to a point where I've just realized I've been left relates. behind. Yeah. You have to, the one that's making that sacrifice, you have to carry that person along one way or the other. So at the point where you are now relaxing and enjoying the harvest, you're doing it together. Yeah. But we will all come to a point where we will sit back and take account and find if we, uh, our partner has acknowledged and appreciated sacrifice. the sacrifices we've made along the way. Okay, after, I'm going to wrap up on this very soon. I'm going to take a few calls and hear from our viewers. Okay. But you see, the reason why we found, found this Michelle Obama thing trended was because many people felt that Obama is Obama now. <laughs> you see these Nigerian men like that, you go and sacrifice for. These, these men that are, they are mama, they mama's boys. That, you know, these are, these, how, how do you choose the kind of spouse? How do you know mm. the kind of spouse to sacrifice for? Can I sacrifice? Can I stop this thing? Because remember now, these days, ladies are doing their master's degree. They're going abroad to have, they're, they are like high flyers. You just pray so, spend so much money. You're just coming back home, speaking all this, and now you're about to get married. And the guy says, uh, he, I think you got to stay home. So your father is like, ah, after all the money I spent on your education. So these are the kind of sacrifice. And then you're thinking, should I, should I not, should I, should I not? These are, and the Nima said it's a choice. You decide. Well, how does a woman know if it's the right decision to make up? Um, I mentioned earlier that the decision to stay at home is not for the husband, it's for your children and for yourself. Like you're making a decision that I'm going to do this for the kind of family I want to have. I, want, I don't want a family where we both don't know our children and we yeah. are both just focused on personal growth and grandizement. When we have given birth to children, we are responsible for that one. How do you know a man that is worth making sacrifice for? You really can't tell. You know, we, people sacrifice and raise children and we pray that our children would, add, would, would appreciate the sacrifices we have made. Mm. I didn't understand the pressure of having, of, of my parents went through until I gave birth. 
the day after giving birth, I looked at my parents differently. I looked at my mother-in-law differently. Like, I came back home and I'm like, Tokma, you are going to be a mother-in-law. You better change how you, you, how you are looking at being a mother-in-law. Because I had boys. I think that we all pray and hope our investment pays turns out okay. right. Okay. Even when we do our best. So you might invest this time in a, a man, but don't put your hope on a human being. God has given you brains. I think that the conversation should end on the note of how should you wait? Waiting right. Don't wait and fold your hands and think it's over. Mm -hmm. Michelle Obama waited, but she did not become redundant. Mm -hmm. She waited and she was so vibrant all through. And now when the children are seemingly they are on their own and okay, she's writing books, going on book tours around the world. She's living her life. So that woman's story you just shared, her life isn't over. She can just stand up and mm -hmm. think that I am 62 now. All of them I've done with Omugo. I want to start a Why different phase of my life. I just, the number just came to my head. Because really, as a city, too many people feel like their life is over. But it's not. You can start a fresh journey at any point in time. So it's, the point is, don't stay in bitterness. Mm. Don't, don't let bitterness keep you so from seeing the opportunities. Because what happens in most cases is, when women are feel betrayed, they become bitter and they never see any good anywhere anymore. And it steals their joy let's and steals their we're life. Only, we are not let's talking talk. to the men yeah. enough about yeah, you can. Where, <laughs> you know, where they see an opportunity for the woman to be the one to go out mm. and chase the dreams and chase yeah, this happens. How, you know, we don't see enough of that. And the reason why we're having this conversation, why we're having comments like this, especially from young girls saying, I'm not going to make that mistake, is because we're not seeing enough of that. Yeah. We need to, I want to hear the men. Yes, I want to, yeah. I want to okay. hear men. Say, you know what? I figure when we started this, my wife is so brilliant. She's so this, the connection she has, the influence she has, she has to be the one that, you know, is out there, be the high flyer. So us... And I've got the house covered for her. Yeah. We don't have that conversation. We need to have it. And the sort of women and girls that we're raising now, they are coming out, they're high flyers. Mm. And they're going to meet you, the Nigerian man. Are you ready? Are you truly ready to make the sacrifices that you be, that is expected right. for your family and for her growth? And you know, the Ima, I'm going to come to you on that because I want you to touch on that. I'm also going to bring mm. in our guests, but let me just let you have a word. Okay, so I agree with Miriam that, you know, we should talk more about such, but I have seen in a lot of that. I know a, a, a family where the man had an idea of a business, the wife's corporate fund started the business, and then she had to step out of the business. What he simply did, she's a sole signatory to the account, she approves whatever money is going out, and is enjoying just being creative. Mm. So sometimes, families do these things and we don't talk more about it. What I wanted to happen was what Tokma said. Sometimes it's not because you've been betrayed, just because you now felt left out. You just feel, ah, I know what I could have been like when I was mm. 30. Ah, I knew what kind of person I was, I was out there. And then suddenly, suddenly you allow bitterness start to come in mm. to distort your mentality. That's not when you should have negative mentality. That's when you should be grateful that every single thing you sacrifice for, because life itself is a risk, you are, count, you are seeing the results. If you sacrifice so your husband will be an high flyer, a high flyer, do you want him not to be a high flyer so that you'll be happy when, you are, when you're in your men, uh, negative mental state? No, no, you want him to be a high flyer. And so that is your, itself is your success. If you're sacrificing for your kids, your success will be that you know, they're worth exactly where, yeah. what you sacrificed for. So you're reaping exactly what you sold. So the, please, let's just have that gratitude mentality. Come on, Rotimi, are you there? Yeah, thank you. You're live. Go ahead, please. Morning, sir. Yeah, thank you. Yeah, the issue we have discussed right now this morning is a very interesting issue. I will let you know, most career women lose their man at end of because they visually, mm. the majority of them, usually get lost with their career. Once they fall in love with their career, before you get to the, the strength to carry on their career, well, because so many of them will say, I don't need the man who I want to I don't need him. What I want to especially when they have a team of two, before you get to know, they are divorced. Before you get to know, they don't have time for their man. These are the issues. Because we should not be able to count that in the jail. This is that important to learn some West civilization. This is the same as society. This look in your world. America has had The same thing is coming to my people separately. Or are you going to have to seek marriage anymore? What they are just after these days is to have to make money from their career. I think it's not good for our society. That's why we have single parents everywhere, little mamas. Uh, babies, fathers, this is affecting and killing our society. We should not fly this career into marriages. Okay. Hmm.
Thank you, Rosemary. Could you summarize what yes, you said? Yes, so he's just saying that a lot of women, career women, lose their husbands. That's why there's a higher rate of divorce these days. They love their careers more than they love their families or willing to make the sacrifices for their families. Okay, I'll bring it on, yes, because I like to even hear her thoughts, our celebrity guests to join the conversation. But um, I, when we come back, I want us to talk about those men who have chosen to step back. Yes. Seeing that their wives are high flyers, they are MBs of companies, and you know, hey, I can't, I'll stay with the children. I'm okay. Can <laughs> we like... have a conversation <laughs> and, and understand their own thinking and see if more men can begin to accept this role, especially as we move and evolve into a new world? Let's go on a break, we'll be right back. Stay tuned. Your view will be right back. Thanks for staying with us. So joining the conversation is a Nigerian radio personality, talk show host, presenter, mm -hmm. entrepreneur, and the beautiful Tolu Oniro Demure. Welcome to the studio. Good morning. Thank you so much for having me. Good to have you, Thank Tools. you. Thank you. So before you came on, we're having this really interesting conversation about Michelle Obama's mm. post, where she was saying that she, at some point in her career, she was giving 70% mm. and her husband was giving 30%. And we're discussing the dynam dynamics in the home where when women have to sacrifice and step back because of their husbands. Some have been burnt, others are full of regrets. They feel mm -hmm. that they were betrayed. Um, so we're actually going to go flip it to the fact that Niger some Nigerian men are now accepting that role of, listen, you are the MD of the company. Mm -hmm. You're doing well. Why don't I stay home to the kids? We need to, Mariam was saying that we don't say more of that. Mm -hmm. Maybe to encourage more men in that situation. Let me start with you. In, have you ever seen the situation where a woman had to sacrifice? And would you ask a woman to sacrifice for her husband? So, um, in, my, in my few years of being married, I've been married like how many years now, um, I've realized that what would work for me won't work for somebody else. What works mm. for somebody else won't work for me. So, I think if within their unit, if it works for them, so for example, if as the MD of the company, she is bringing in more money, and, the, you know, they have this um, idea that there are certain couples that once they have children, they're like, no, somebody has to be at home. If that's what, what works for them, I think there's absolutely nothing wrong with that. Mm -hmm. I think it's um, down to communication within the couple mm -hmm. um, and understanding what the needs of the family are and just making sure that, you know, to the, to the best of their abilities, the, meet and, the needs are met. But it's in cases where women feel like, so we're talking about being idle. Somebody was sending a message that even if you step back, don't be idle because don't you don't want mm -hmm. women to feel that like, become bitter. Because you, you now look 10, 15 years down the line, your kids are grown, they've left the house, mm. and here they have nothing but such, such, such activities. <laughs> and you come home, you go to, I mean, like, you feel like you, have, you don't have a life. Mm. You ha what, what, what advice would you tell women in that situation? Okay, so I'm, I'm trying to be good because it's morning TV. <laughs> <laughs> it's very um, but if I'm going to be very honest, I think it's so important, so, so, so important, even if um, for... for, for especially the woman, to have something. Mm. Um, because I was watching something on, um, I think it was a podcast, uh, where it was, it was in the UK, but a lot of um, Nigerian, like British Nigerians, and they were talking about how they wish that their, their moms in particular did not sacrifice so much. Mm. Because they sacrificed so much that their joy was only in their children. Hmm. So Didn't when you, life. yes, so basically when you get, you know, when the kids now grow up, they, you know, go to university, they're out of the house, they don't really have much of a life. Hmm. So I found, and this is something that I've also experienced, obviously getting married, having children. Um, I would say in the last year or so, I've basically kind of embarked on a journey of like rediscovering myself. Hmm. Because, you know, a lot of people know when you become a wife, when you become, you know, mother, things change. And it's... It's, I think it's almost natural for women to, you know, say, I want to be the great, great wife, I want to be a great mother and everything. And before you know it, you kind of forget yourself. Mm -hmm. So I remember there was a point um, about almost two years ago where I kind of forgot what I liked. I kind of forgot the things that, you know, the things that, you know, for some people it might be, you know, it might be shopping, it might be, you know, it might be reading, it might be traveling, it might be traveling. And I just forgot about the things that made me, you know, like, like gingered me. So over the last year or so, I've kind of gone back to, okay, I'm changed, I'm a different person. What excites me? What makes me happy? What makes me me? I'm still obviously doing the best to be, you know, a great mom and wife as well. Okay. Let me come to the ladies. So, yeah. Um, yeah. On, the, on, the, on this show, we have um, YK on the show. And YK mm -hmm. mentioned how she was a dancer. She went on tour. She went everywhere in the world. 
she had a life because she had a support system. Mm. Her mom and grandma helping with her daughter. And when her mom died, she snapped out of it that, you know, someone has to... And she wasn't in a marriage. So she didn't... She wasn't sacrificing for one man. Mm. She was... It was about her daughter. And today she's living that life. She's sort of finished raising her daughter when she went to school. She got her life back. So it doesn't seem like it's impossible to wait a period, give it a, a part of your life to something and then get back your life. Is it also possible? Because I have said that. Is it possible to encourage women to think, okay, when the kids get to a certain stage, then I get my life back? Or does it mean that, you know, everything just pauses and life, you know, then you start to enter into this negative mentality of regret? Mm. So let me just, you know, respond to that. <laughs> I know ask you. I was thinking, was that a question you want me to answer? So, Nima is talking about a woman who can make the sacrifice and take some time out, mm. knowing that eventually she can take her time, you know, take, make that time back. But do we ask it of men? No. Do we want men to take that time off? Do you think men don't Will take time off? Will men be willing to take time off, knowing that eventually in their 60s, when the <laughs> muscles are faded and everything, and then they can have their time back because they used their 30s and their 40s to be at home while the wife was high-flying? Mm. So I think today's conversation for me is that men should be encouraged to see it as a possibility. Mm. That when it comes, when if you have that sort of situation, you can take a step back without Doesn't that go against the Bible? Yeah, no, no without that going against what we're taught, society. like a man is the head, you're the neck, you're the head, they move you around. No, but, but is even be, apart from the Bible, there, how many women will be comfortable with the fact that they are the ones footing all the bills? Even if they're comfortable, the society isn't comfortable about it. That's because if, exactly. Let's talk about... But yeah. the, how many women will be comfortable? Because yeah. you stay with your friend and your friend said, oh, my husband just booked tickets for us to go to Kiliko, but because your husband is the one doing school runs and all of that, he's not earning as much to book your ticket. You are the one earning to book the ticket. Yeah. So you are now unable to fully share, oh, my husband just did this one for me. Because you are the one that has taken yeah. up, you're bringing in the money, and he's supporting at home. So... Social construct already doesn't favor a man sitting down to support. So I think that sort of ideology kind of, I mean, if, if a woman is at home looking after the kids, doing the school runs and everything, that is an extremely important job. Mm -hmm. So I think people that look at it like um, when it's flipped, when it's a man that's doing it, it's not as important. That, that for me is like a, the, the wrong ideology. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I think important. it's, yeah, yeah. Yes. I mean, Honestly, like I haven't, there have been times when I've had like a few months, I'm at home with the kids. It is a hectic job. It's actually very hectic. Um, balancing it out with a career is, is, is crazy. Um, I would say this, a lot of men are not, when it comes to sacrificing certain things, let me give you an example. If you have a guy that um, for the longest time, every Saturday he plays five-a-side football, every Saturday from like nine till one, he plays five-a-side football with his friends, I guarantee you that he gets married, he has kids, he's still playing five-a-side football. Yep. Whereas a woman, you know, quite often, she's, she has a certain passion, something that she's been doing. Mm -hmm. She gets married, things kind of change. She has children, things change. Mm -hmm. So, Even more. yeah, so I think it's, I think it's, I don't think, Very I true. think really it's all about balance. Mm. So if you are passionate, you know, maybe about dancing and that's something that makes you feel alive, makes you feel happy, I don't think it's something that you should give up completely. Because I think maybe just try to do it. Because I found that um, when I went through the stage where I was like, okay, you know what? Kids, 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 100%, you know, marriage, 100% and everything. I wasn't, I don't think I was really fulfilling myself. So I actually don't think mm. I was the best mom. Mm. I think it's very important for you to be, you, you know how sometimes like you're stressed at work, it's been crazy, then you're looking after the kids. I don't you think, <laughs> yes, I don't think you're, you're the best mom. And there's a certain level of happiness, mm. there's a certain level of happiness mm. that you, you know, you, you get when you're doing something for you. I don't think it means you have to be, you know, completely selfish. I think it will be def very difficult, to, you know, to sort of do that. But I think it's really a question about balance. All right, let me go on a quick break. When we come back, we continue this conversation. Stay with us. We'll be right back. Stay tuned. Your view will be right back. to stay with us so we do know a few men who have made that choice of staying back and uh, it would be nice to hear from, from a few of them this morning to tell us their experience but I was mm. going to say something about women because a woman sometimes feel like I've failed not because she has truly failed because Nima, Nima always says something that 
the fact that she's a mother, mm. why is more value than any other thing she could have been? So this is the weight she put on that role as being a mother. But a woman sees tools or Miriam with your hair, your nails are done, <laughs> you go out to the spa, you're talking about these, you're going out for meetings, you have lunch and this, you come back. You're traveling the world. You're traveling, you come back, and she feels like I'm just there. Yes. I take the kids. You know, she, so for our own definition of I'm not successful is that you're doing so much stuff. You have your money to buy hair, you travel somewhere. And I suck it's like she's not she doesn't have that extra funds to buy a weave. She doesn't have that extra funds to have lunch somewhere, she doesn't mm. have extra funds to get her nails done. That's her own definition of failure. Although she has kids who are doing well. Her kids are doing great. Right. So how do we define what success is, especially mm. today? Ma'am, want to jump in? Yes, because you reminded me of a conversation I had with a friend. I used to work in the bank. And I remember after I had my first child, I was, you know, home basically. And my friend who still worked in the bank at the time when she came. And I was just pouring my heart to her and saying how I, you know, envied them. They were still, you know, in their nice suits. And suits. She says, Madam, do you know that we go to Mount of Fire to pray for what you have? <laughs> <laughs> it was like perspective, you know. Yeah. And so for some of us, it's not really about, like you said, it's not the failure. It's just formal. Like we're missing out on something. We're constantly doing it to each other. Yeah. Whichever side of the divide you're on, you're constantly you thinking like, the other person mm. is doing better than you. So I think it's good to have conversations where yeah. we remind each other that you're doing good where you are. And, yeah. you know, mm. yeah. I think my come. So, okay. I'm gonna come here. Go I wanted to, to talk because um, when we're on the break, we're talking about strong women and strong personalities. Where women, you know, right? is it possible? Is it possible for one woman to be everything she can show that it all? <laughs> okay, so I I was talking about um, I I had this idea and I started sharing it with my friends. I don't like the term strong woman. Mm. Strong woman is not really like I was saying. If you have um, if you founded a business. If you had different offices all over the world, um, you would, they wouldn't call you um, a strong woman because of that. A strong woman is somebody that has endured and is enduring and will keep enduring. Long suffering. So, yes. So I think when, when, like the different things, the different things that have happened to me, when people have called me, I, I think I've done quite well, you know, career wise. But when people have called me a strong woman, it's because of the heartache I've endured. Mm. Like when I, you know, lost uh, my, my, our, our well, first child. Tasking. When I lost my first child, people were like, you're a strong woman, you're a strong woman. So for mm. me, I equate mm. being called a strong woman to your negative pain. experience, to pain and what <laughs> you have endured. Like, it, they're not talking about you're a strong woman because you have all these businesses. Mm. You're a strong woman because something yeah. that should have broken you didn't break you. Yeah. But you know what? And then once you're termed strong woman, then it just means that you have this back that can just take <laughs> more <laughs> and more and more and more. So I, I, do, I tell people, don't call me a strong woman, call me a powerful woman. Mm. Uh -huh. I like that because it just means that that, I, I feel, enco encompasses yeah. everything. Mm -hmm. So it basically talks about, you know, um, your inner strength. It talks about what you've achieved, what you've created, how you're balancing different things. And I think it's, for me, in my opinion, it's like That's a more appropriate term. So can I come to you? Because I know you had a few examples of people. I know you don't mention their names, mm -hmm. but a few men who have taken on this okay. new role of staying at home Jeez. and they're doing well. You know, I, and it's very impressive that um, I know someone personally that his, his wife, very high-flying woman, and she, he's the one people know in school. You know, he's the one that comes for school runs. He's the one that you see checking the children's book at midterms. And we don't acknowledge them enough because you know what? Negative stories th trend, you know? It is the person that comes out and say, oh, I've, I've lost everything. That person will go over. The one that comes out to say, oh, I have an amazing husband, yeah. that my husband is doing it. They're like, oh, she's lying. She's hiding something. I'm sure he's beating her inside the room. She's just coming mm. out to paint a perfect picture out there. And the reason we need to highlight that is because some people believe, and a lot of young, young um, women, young ladies, are scared of getting married because they're scared that when they get married, it will mean that they are losing out on all the possibilities that can happen in the future. So we need to highlight a few of these men that have made this happen. Well. So Ekundayo 33 says, her success is my joy. My wife works with a government agency that she, and she was transferred out of Lagos. I had to adjust my work schedule to be able to take care of the home, and we are both happy. Mm. We, we need more of that. More, yeah. men, more men are embracing that. So let's move on. To, I mean, I think, I think that's a way, good way to wrap up that segment. There was another topic that really caught our attention where a young man, VJ Adams, was saying that he's a mama's boy. 
What's the big deal? Why are we making? And because talk to talk, 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 talk with mama boys. Yes. How many boys do you have now? Five. Right? I, have, oh. I have three boys. So <laughs> please, you know, because she's a mama's boy, and uh, because he he's proudly no, a mama's boy. Mama, uh, and then so you're boys. raising boys, mm -hmm. and your, your 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 son. You also have boys. Yeah, yeah that's I've got three boys. Three boys. Three boys. <laughs> yeah, so in future, would they say that your children are mama's boys? I mean, let me start with the, the two. Are you raising mama's boys? You didn't raise you you it. Is it no. okay to say mama's boys, but name? Um, you know. I mean, it's negative to call a man mama's boy, but it's okay to say that is girl. Yeah. yeah. So when, you know, uh, so let's So I, I watched, I, I saw the comments after um, his video, and I felt that I just came into the, your video and said, please, oh, I am raising but my boys to be mama's boys okay, because let me, let me, let I sat and watched their infant, infant head. head. <laughs> let, me, let me go and if you really come back, we'll now take on this mama's boy matter. Stay with us to be right <laughs> Stay tuned. Your view will be right back. Lush hair. Be beautiful. Thanks for staying with us. So we're discussing mama's boys. And it's important because we have two ladies that have just boys. And they say they're raising mama's boys. Um, and one of the reasons why it was interesting to talk about it because we talk about mama's girl, girl, that is girls. And we celebrate okay. it. Like, oh, it's such a cute thing. When we talk about mama's boy, make it look as if it's derogatory, you know. So mm. what, what's your take on them? So we talk about to tools. Oh, yeah. Um, I, I was saying before we went on break that... Um, um, I loved what VJ Adam said. He said, I'm not going to... He, he was of the opinion that don't, don't insult me for being a mama's boy because you were... All, all these babes, you were not there. Where, who sat and watched my infant, infant head? head? Who was the one... Who is the one that will go on... Go, will, will fast and pray if, mm -hmm. she, if he hears anything is going to happen to me? Who is the one that would be sitting down and doing vigil? That all of you, all these babes that, are, that want to become wives well, are not ready to do all of that. that. There are many marriages are broken. Because of mama's boys. Many homes are in disarray because there are men who defer to their mother for every single decision to take mm. the part. Wow. So that's a real issue. So as nice and funny as and, and flowery as we like to talk about yep. like, that mamas are great. But many women are having issues in their marriage today. Many women should to mothers. they should understand yeah. the role of the mother in Absolutely. the life of their husband. Please explain to me. So it, it, I told you my perspective changed. Yes. Daily I pushed out two boys. Yeah. I realized that, eh, hey, talk about your mother in law. I had become a mother-in-law since the day I gave birth. Mm. So I knew that I was preparing her, my children for a long-term journey of loving their wives. Right. But I didn't want them to become so hooked on their wives and that they would forget about me. I, it's not fair. It's not. My, my husband should not say he loves me so much he will forget about his mother. He should mm. care for his mother. He should check on his mom. <laughs> That's the right thing. Let me hear Tool's thoughts on this. Okay, so... <laughs> <laughs> my boys, every, every, if you follow me on Instagram, you know that I love my boys to death. And I'm hoping they love me the same way. <laughs> um, so I think, I think it's sad that Mama's Boys is now like um, something that's very negative. I would like to think that in a positive way, my boys will be Mama's Boys. Just like, you know, my God's grace, if I have like a daughter, she'll be a Mama's Girl as well. Um, you, you, your, your mother is somebody that, you know, and we spoke about it earlier, has probably sacrificed quite a lot. They love you, like, mm. got, the, the few times that my kids have been, you know, in hospital, I will sleep on the bed with them. I will be there, you know, and that's, that's what a lot of mothers do. Um, having said that, I think it is very, very important as your kids get older, especially when it comes to the point where, you know, your son is about to get married and everything, you should not be the third person in the marriage. Exactly. Mm -hmm. So one of the things that I really, really love and I'm grateful to my mother-in-law for is she doesn't, she does not stress, she does not, you know, and I remember speaking to my husband and saying, okay, what if I did this? What if I said, I'm never like cooking or never entering the kitchen again and everything. If you told your mom, what would she say? And he said that his mom would say, well, you're the one that married her. <laughs> so so I, really, I really respect that. I think, because um, you hear some horrible stories mm. about, you hear some horrible like mother-in-law stories. I'm so grateful that I actually have amazing, <clears throat> amazing in-laws. My father-in-law, my mother-in-law, they have like shown me nothing but love. It's never been a, oh, my son, my son did this, or, yeah. you know, you need to do this for my son. So, because, and I think Nima always tried to tell us that thing, because, I mean, for, for the sake of those people, 
who are going through strenuous relationships with their spouses because of this mother-in-law, this um, mama's boy factor. I think it's better we, we put it in the proper perspective. Mm. Should, shouldn't you just leave the term out, the label out? Because I defer, I used to defer everything to my dad. I was the daddy's girl. And I never remember apologizing to my husband mm. for it. Sometimes I'll talk to my dad and he's a good secret keeper. <laughs> and nobody would ever hear. And when my husband says, are you sure you've not shared that? I'm like, like nobody, nobody. And there was well, hardly a thing I didn't defer to my dad. So if it was the other way around, my husband deferring everything to his mom, Maybe is the person you're talking about, you're deferring to that is the problem. Of course. So if my dad was a someone I cannot keep secret, someone who likes to fight, he comes to the house and says, my daughter, then there's a problem. So if we're looking at it, we should be talking to the mothers to prepare themselves for that stage. Yeah. Mm. Just as Susan said, when he has someone else to love and then you know how to comport yourself at that point. So I was going to say, why is um, a daddy's girl, that term, why is it supposedly positive, mm -hmm. but a mommy's boy is negative? Mm -hmm. Okay, can I say why I think so? <laughs> you see, mothers, we want to be part of everything. We insert ourselves into ah, everything. Yeah, well, this word insert Shush, again. madam. <laughs> <laughs> She's trying to bring private conversation to the table. You know, and mm -hmm. so when you have a mama's boy, it doesn't end with when he goes to mama's house and he's dealing with mama, mama now hears something about tools and she's like, ha ha, no wonder my son's neck is thin. Mm. I'm going to come and deal with, you know, I'm going to handle it myself. I'm coming to fix things. But a daddy's girl may end up turning and daddy's like, you know, it ends there. You know what you have become magic. Most times it ends there. Daddies don't normally insert themselves in every <laughs> conversation happening mm. in, the, in the house. Mm. So that's what we're talking about. The mama's boys we're talking about now is because you're on the side of we have given birth to boys. Don't let, abandon me. Let, let, let us call them in a few years. Yeah, let me just let, let, let us ask about, about this. They always feel like they know things. No. No. The mama's boys <laughs> we're talking about are mamas that they, they, they talk to their son, they think they are helping. But you see, you call your daughter in law. Because you want to help her, mm -hmm. but what you're, when you're talking, you're trying to help her. You are you revealing things. You get your place. You in, beco in you're secret. becoming authoritative. Sometimes your son is also reporting and saying to his wife, rather than say, "Okay, I think that the cop is black," so he's black. He just say, "But my mommy even said that's a mistake." Mm. <laughs> your friends could be the ones who who, who gave you that advice. Mm. When you tell your wife, you say, "No, I think this cop is black." Why don't you say, "No"? We, uh, Banky and Co and Co and Co said the cop is black. Mm. That's where the problem is because your wife now hears other people through you <laughs> rather than hear you. Yes. You so, can defend to anybody you want to defend you know, to. There's, you know, there's a, and the, the conversation is deeper than how we are saying it. We have a cultural um, setting where people feel that you don't have a child until you have a girl because the girl is mm -hmm. the one that will take care of you. Mm -hmm. And many women will feel like, until I have a girl, because when the man grows up, he was going to fall in love. And he's going to come. I, I keep in my head, I'm just looking at my children. I'll be like, hey, so one day these two, two, they'll come. They say, I love her. She's the love of my life. You're already jealous. So I, I'm like, no, I'm not jealous. I'm prepared. I'm prepared. I'm prepared. Are you sure? You're prepared. I'm prepared. <laughs> no, I'm prepared I'm, for I'm the actually, reality. I'm with her. Yes. I'm with her. Yes, I'm, with her. I'm prepared for that reality. And they say, go and born a girl. Go and give birth to a girl that would stay with you. Ah, talk about you will not do a mugo. Hey. You will not do a mungo because you don't have a daughter. You know, oh, there are many oh. things that we mom, the, mo mothers oh, of boy, boys, boy, are, we, it, it, go, it happens. So it's, it's the, you're busy, but in their married, that has their own mungo. Let no, 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 no. I'm, I'm, I'm saying that we shouldn't, we shouldn't, we should raise boys that understand that you, you, have, you have a responsibility in your mom as well. Because women tend to be the ones to nurture parents and they leave the men to so just, mm. men, men will take up the new family. I think that I it shouldn't just be mungo. like that. It should be a mutual thing. Just come and ask men me. should take care of their moms. Right. They should check on their mothers mm. and should not just abandon their mothers. You know, we need to do a show for mother-in-laws. You know, just a show where we <laughs> have, get, have a mother-in-law come mm. into our yeah. so, <laughs> with two mother-in-laws and let's just have the conversation. Because the way I see it, I don't want to do a mugo. I want any of my children, because I have both sexes, to ask for help. Oh, mommy, I need help. If it's the man that is asking, fine, I'll be there. If it's his sister, fine. But if you don't want me in your house as well, fine, I'll be in my husband's house. That's the way I want to spend my old age. I don't want to be... It's not my cultural duty when you mm. give birth to show up like my mother did with all the pepper soup. And all. Mm, I don't have time. If you want <laughs> me to come, I will come. I don't know, we have to move into your own, because I mean, I'd yeah. like to wrap up on this. i like to go into it. But I think, really, in a nutshell, we're not saying anything against mama's boy. We're just saying mm. everybody must be responsible. Mm. So when you have two parties in a relationship, even though you're you the mama's boy and you love your son so much, know your 
boundaries. Mm. Yeah. Mother-in-law keep your boundaries. Mm. Where you stop and where you start. And mm. husbands too. Talk through yourself, not through. Our mommy said this, mm -hmm. daddy said that. My mommy used to cook the soup like this. Anyways, we have to wrap up very soon. But let me come to tools. So, what is happening in your life? What's happening? We told you about, we heard about your family, your kids. Yeah. yeah. Tell us what's going on with your career. Um. Oh my gosh. Sorry, I'm still in in this whole mama's boy because <laughs> I'm I'm praying that I'm yeah. better. Yeah. Um. So uh, right now, very excited. <clears throat> um. Our our visual podcast is now on um, DSTV. We're super excited oh, about that. Sure. When I say we, I mean uh, myself and mm -hmm. Bimmy. Uh, we host it together. So it's every Thursday <clears throat> at 9.30 on uh, DSTV 153 and on GoTV Channel 6. Mm. And we talk about everything. We talk about everything. It's at 9.30 because um, it's not for kids. Oh. Um, <laughs> yeah, yeah. So I think we, we need more platforms where, you know, we, we talk about things as grown-ups. Mm -hmm. You know, we talk about things as grown-ups and we're able to share our different experiences. Um, this, we've been doing this um, since 2019. Mm. Um, so this is season six. Season yeah, six, yeah. It's, on, it's on DSTV. And I think one of the things that I really like um, about the show, and one of the um, biggest compliments that um, I've received mm. is that it's infotainment. Uh -huh. So it's yeah. information, it's you know, it's entertainment. So we have um, different guests. We have, like, you know, we've had doctors talking about, you know, um, health. Um, <clears throat> in the last season, we had a doctor that was talking about uh, reproductive health mm. and how, unfortunately, in this country, when you're dealing with issues of fertility, 99% of the time, people think it's the woman. Mm. And then um, she actually explained that um, the couples that she sees, 40% of the time, it's a woman. 40% of the time, it's a guy. Mm. And then 20%, it's like a mixture of both things. Mm. So all of these things, you find that a lot of people don't know about them. Yeah. Yeah. We've had, you okay. know, sex therapists as well. Mm. Mm. So I'm going to quick, we're going to come up and continue to hear yeah. a bit about more. Just stay with us, we'll be right back. Just not. So we have to wrap up with you, but let's take a few comments on social media for you, Rana, because I know a lot of you wanted to say a few things. Yes, so let's go on Twitter. Go carry the way. Oh, you have any? Okay. Okay. Kali okay. um, Paka says, welcome okay. to... Um, Thank you. Called Funky Flex. Ah, okay, go. So God knows when I get married to that chosen one, I will be more of an urban hobby than a normal, traditional hobby. If my wife is, for instance, like honey pots. <laughs> I can step back and take care of the home. <laughs> take oh, online class. classes. <laughs> I work remotely from home so she can do her thing, period. Yeah. John Wachiku says, I am a mommy's boy. Back in school, I always called my mommy every week at a point she prepared jollof rice and brought it to my school, which I shared with my hostel mates. Therefore, I subscribe to mommy's boy <laughs> syndrome. <laughs> okay. So, tools, we have to wrap up. Uh, any final words for our viewers? Um, well, oh gosh, I like, I have so much more to say about the mother, mommy's boys, about, you know, uh, trying to get like a balance in your, in your marriage. I just, uh, will just reiterate what I said earlier about if it works for you, don't really worry about what people say, because mm -hmm. I think, especially in Nigeria, the power of what people say or what people think has made a lot of people make the wrong decisions. Mm -hmm. So if, you know, you're in a marriage where you are the, you know, uh, you're, you're, the, you're the career person or you have like a job that's paying the most and you're at a critical point where you have very, very young children and it makes sense for somebody to be at home mm -hmm. with the children. If that works for you, it doesn't matter what anybody says because really and truly you're doing it for the benefit of your family. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And your career? And the career, yeah. You're doing Oh, oh my career! Oh, career-wise. Um, so basically, I'm not. I'm not. I've, I was beat FM for like, gosh, almost 13 years, um, and I was the. I believe I was the first female group program director in Nigeria, which was a massive, massive um, uh, thing for me. Uh, so I, I took a step back from that. I'm currently doing um, off air with Gemian Tools, like I said, 9:30. Every Thursday, DSTV 153 and GoTV Channel yeah. 6. Thank and yes. um, a few other things that I should be updating people well about. Yeah. Fantastic. Nice to have you. Hope to have you more on the show at some point. Oh, when you're talking about the, the mother in laws, I'll. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's all we can take on today's show. Have a fabulous weekend. We'll see you Monday. Bye for now.